the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joyous feast. Joyous feast. Uh, joy to be with you here on this great feast of the transfiguration of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we heard in the epistle in St. Peter's uh, letter, uh, universal letter, he's heard him there talk of this event uh, of going up on the mountain to see Christ transfigured uh, before him. We heard it, of course, in the gospel as well, Peter and James and John there. Uh, all the first three gospels record this great event, uh, Christ asc ascending the mountain with uh, Peter and James and John. Uh, Moses and Elijah uh, appearing there on his, uh, on, by his side. Uh, and in doing this, also the disciples, uh, the apostles, realizing and finally recognizing indeed uh, that Christ is not yet just another apostle, or another, another prophet, but rather is the very Son of God. St. Peter, who had just even confessed these things, you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, the very Christ of God, as uh, in St. Mark's Gospel he records it. Uh, we have this great, indeed, this great revelation uh, to the apostles, but also to us as well. Uh, light from light, we say in the creed, uh, true God, a true God. Begotten, not made, not created. The very uncreated one, uh, shining forth brilliantly, the very uncreated light. Uh, that we also might shine forth with that great light that he has prepared for us and shined and radiates uh, through his holy saints. Blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, the psalmist says to us. Uh, and so we also seek in death to become very saints of God. The apostles that were with Christ that day, Peter showing his great faith, uh, proclaiming Christ to be the Son of God. James, knowing the very hope of the resurrection recognizing and realizing that in his own martyrdom and John the disciple whom Jesus loved these three disciples uh, indeed showing forth faith hope and love uh, the great gifts of God as well uh, they ascended that mountain with Christ they journeyed with him uh, that they might see him shining forth brilliantly uh, and might proclaim that same brilliance to us. John's gospel doesn't include this account, but rather the very beginning of his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. Uh, and the Word that shone forth brilliantly uh, as well, proclaiming it in the very beginning of his gospel, that we might know that Christ himself is indeed the Son of God. Again, as we confess in the creed, like of light. Uh, dear ones, this light that shines forth from Christ is uh, what we are called to shine forth as well. This morning, on uh, this 6th of August, on the Transfiguration, we bring forth fruits. We bring fruits to have them blessed, uh, to eat them, to partake of these first fruits of the season. Uh, grapes, because in at least certain parts around the Mediterranean at this time, this is exactly what is coming forth. Uh, and so we bring them forth to be blessed and to be a blessing to us as well. Uh, but more than that, and in addition to that, we bring them forth as an offering, as an offering of our first fruits, but as a reminder also that we too are called to be fruitful, uh, that we are uh, called in our faith in our hope, in our love, to bear forth the very fruits of God. That as Christ was transfigured on the mountain and shone forth with that brilliant uncreated light, so we too are called uh, to, to be transfigured from the darkness into light. To be transfigured, to be transformed uh, from the very darkness of the sin, of, of sin, of the world, uh, of the carnal passions and pleasures of the flesh. Uh, we just, the prayer before the gospel, illumine our hearts, O Master, who lovest mankind with your light of thy divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings, and plant in us also the fear of thy blessed commandments, trampling down all carnal desires, that we may enter a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee. This is the transfiguration, the transformation, 
the metamorphosis that we Christians undertake as well. And that in undertaking that, we too might shine brilliantly. That we too might shine with that great splendor and glory that Christ has prepared for us. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Christ revealed himself to those three disciples and apostles in a way that the rest in the world would see in the Ascension. Uh, he revealed himself to them and says, Now go and tell no one of this until after I have resurrected from the dead. But we, dear ones, have seen, have heard, and have known, and know the very glory of God, and that this is what is prepared for us as well. That as we trample down the carnal desires and passions of the flesh, we do so knowing that what we receive as we live out that life of blessedness in God is the very light and life of God himself. For in thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light do we see light. We just sang proclaimed a few minutes ago. This is the great feast of the transfiguration. We see Christ transfigured before us on Mount Tabor. And we recognize the journey that we must undertake as well so that we can be transfigured with him. Those disciples and apostles walked that mountain path with him ascended that mountain that they might ascend the very mountain of God. Jesus, just before this as well, if you think even just back to last week's gospel, right, we heard this in the, just the chapter before. The timing uh, here is such that uh, a week ago, Jesus fed the 4,000 men and men, women, and children. He fed them from those few loaves of bread and few fish. And the leaders of the Jews wondered what he was doing. Uh, and then he goes on to tell us and remind his disciples and apostles and us that the way to follow him is indeed the way of the cross. The way to that transfiguration is to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me, Jesus says. And so we take up our cross and follow him, knowing that through that cross comes also the resurrection. Knowing that to see and to, re and to be and to have that for a transfiguration revealed to us, to be able to open our eyes to see the very effulgent, as we say, the great brilliant splendor of God's uncreated light. We do so by walking a path of repentance, a path of the cross, and a path that seeks holiness, one that seeks to walk in the ways of the Lord. Blessed is the man of the first son, who is planted by streams of living water, and who delights in the law of the Lord. This is our delight as well. And so we bring forth to this little table... Not just the fruits of grapes and apples uh, and our other fruits, but we bring forth our first fruits. We come with our own offering, thine own of thine own. We offer unto thee in behalf of all and for all. We say every liturgy, thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee. We are that own, that which we offer unto God himself. We who are the created offer back to the uncreated that which he has made. We offer back unto him our life and our deeds on his behalf. We seek him in faith, in hope, and in love, as did those three disciples and apostles. We seek him in sacrifice through the very cross that he has borne for us, and the very cross that he calls us to bear with him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he says. Let us offer ourselves unto him, that we might receive his rest through the very cross that he has borne for us and prepared for us as well. May we offer ourselves back to God, who is the great offering, uh, and through whose offering we indeed see and receive 
the very light and life of Christ Jesus our God, in whom we have light and life uh, eternal. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joyous feast. Joyous feast.